The Fitzy and Ripper with Kate Ritchie Podcast. Fitzy, a very special guest in the studio. Oh, I'm really excited about this show. It kicks off tonight, 7.30 on 9 and 9 now. So, medical expert Dr Nick Coatesworth. Um, this is a thought-provoking new series which explores. This is the quest for longer life. Can we stay younger longer? And the lady that is helping Dr Nick out is the magnificent Tracy Grimshaw. She joins us now. Tracy! Hey. Tracy! Good morning. Thank Good you morning. for coming in. Thank I, you for having me. I love the topic of this show. Do you? Yeah, and it's a running theme also within Fitzy Whipper Kate Ritchie because, you know, there's one team member who's been taking some hair medication and he's trying oh. to make sure... Sh- oh. Why did you look at me? Well, I don't... I don't. <laughs> Because I thought, I, I didn't think it's, it would be you, but I thought you might give me a clue. No, I know, I, you, I've been away. I haven't had a chance to wax my moustache. <laughs> <laughs> but everybody, I think, naturally in life, is that you're trying to hold on to little tips and there's the show Blue Zones that's been around yeah. for a while. So everybody wants to know how they can have a better quality of life and answer the question, how long can we actually live for? Mm. Well, I, I, look, I, I think... Having just ventured into the longevity space, and I'd honestly never even clocked it, this whole idea was, this show was Nick Coatesworth's idea and he pitched it to the network and then I was recruited sort of at the end of last year. And so I did a deep, deep dive into it. I'd never thought about living, you know, forever or, you know, all of those things. It was never really my thing. Um, It's a real space. That's what I've learned. I mean, the podcasts and the books and the enthusiasts. I I went to London uh, uh, for a week just not so long ago and I was telling, uh, sitting in the back of this cab, telling my girlfriend about what we'd been shooting in America and Mexico. And when we pulled over, this cabbie who's just a regular guy said to me, I've been fascinated by your conversation. I'm really into all of this. He doesn't look like a fitness fanatic. Yeah, and I, mean, I thought this this has reached this whole topic. It it is huge. You know, can I ask what you're doing in Mexico? Oh, um, it's shooting for the show. Yeah, but wow. was it was there some sort of elixir there that it, gave you it, another ten years? Well, I or? didn't do it. It wasn't for me. We were there shooting a guy. You'll see it on the show. Yeah. We were shooting a bloke um, from Melbourne who's a who's a very wealthy, um, really lovely bloke. Bio, he's a biohacker, but he's a businessman who happens right. to be a biohacker. So that's his thing. Um, and he undertook highly experimental gene therapy, anti-aging gene therapy. Wow. Has it worked? Highly experimental. Well, um, that's a good question. If you watch mm-hmm. the show, we check back. I, I just was in Melbourne last week, yeah. um, two, two months after we went, to see what sort of result he'd had from it. Some of it will have, he says, long term results. Yeah, that you don't see overnight. That you don't see overnight. But he he says he's noticed some differences since. But it's, you know, it's unregulated. It's illegal in most of the world. You you couldn't get it done in Australia. You have to go to Mexico or Panama or Colombia or somewhere like that to get it done. So, you know. How many did you bring back? I'll buy five. (laughs) 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 I was a bit worried about the sniffer dogs at the airport. (laughs) You'll get that. I find it so interesting because, of course, like, I'm I'm 45, and I feel as though uh, any focus on living forever or uh, is more around looking younger, especially in in the world that we live in. What are you What are you looking at me for? I'm feeling fresh. I'm feeling young. No, no do you know what I mean? Do you think that the people who are who are doing this, um, I want to say crazy gene therapy, but this experimental the, gene the therapy stuff, and yeah. all those things that are far more scientific, um, do you think they're looking at the rest of the population who are just having their eyelid lifted and the Botox mm-hmm. put in their face that they think, well, you're just heading up the wrong path? I don't... I mean, look, I'm sure there are... Certainly, there's a little bit of competition in this space. There is there are people at the extreme end who are not necessarily endorsed by people at the more conservative yeah. longevity end. Mm. So it is quite competitive. Like any field of human endeavour, you'll find you'll you'll have differences of agreement. Um, look, I don't know. I don't know that there's that sort of judgmental mm. sort of attitude within it. I don't think this fellow who we followed to Mexico. I don't think he would care what anyone else had done. He's yeah. just doing what he wants to do. Yeah. He's putting his body on the line. And yeah. he's, it's not it's not risking anything for anybody else, yeah. and he's paying an absolute you're paying an absolute really? fortune for this. What? This is not affordable treatment. Trust me, oh and God. it's not guaranteed. Trace, it's can not, you t- no. How has life expectancy changed over the years? I think about this all the time about how old our children are going to live to, and yeah. and, and I, how has it changed so much over the years? Well. We actually spoke about that in in one of the episodes of the show. You know, a hundred years ago, 
I, I would have expected... I'm, I just turned 64 a couple of weeks ago. Mm, yep. 100 years ago, I would have been expecting to check out wow. anytime soon. That was sort of life expectancy. And and largely, and that's not necess- that, that's That sort of difference... Um, isn't necessarily about uh, changes in the longevity space and no. extreme gene therapy, obviously. No. That's more about medicine. Yeah. You know, yeah. Medicine's just improved and we've found ways of you know, treating cancer that we didn't know 100 years ago and, and heart disease and things like that. So life expectancy is longer now, but in the longevity space, there are people who are saying, you know, there are people who are saying that, you know, ageing can be reversed. And then there are people who are saying, well, no, that's nonsense. But you you don't know. I mean, uh, you know, there is one scientist who's quite well respected believes that a baby has already been born who will live to 150. And I'm highly dubious about that. Like, you know, right? That is crazy. I'm sceptical about that. But then if you talk to someone in the space, they say, yeah, but, you know, you don't know what's going to happen in 40 years. So if a baby who's born now gets to 40, you don't know what science is going to be able able to offer that baby, given that we can already live longer than, you know, someone born, say, 50 years ago. I I just don't know. I had a doctor talk not long ago, and he was saying, we will cure cancer. Cancer, right? We're on yep. a great track and we will cure cancer. Yep. So now the work that's already being done is looking beyond that to work out how we handle the physical structure of the human body. Because if it's living and like you're talking to past 100 and we're moving forward, we're going to need bones that can actually carry it and have the strength it's fascinating. to reach 150. Exactly. I mean, look, I, I actually think, I'm not a doctor, I'm, I'm a journo. I think we're designed to die. I, I think that we yes. are designed to peter out eventually and ultimately our time is up. Uh, so for me, longevity is about not being sick. You know, it's about... Yep. Yeah. Um, and Nick Coatsworth had a great line and he's used it in the show. He, he says, you want to fall off the cliff, not roll down the hill. Yeah. You don't want the last 10 years of your life to be terrible because you have these sort of nag- nagging illnesses and you're just getting worse and worse and particularly things like cognitive decline. You don't want that. No. So yeah. if you can put in place a system that sort of protects you as much as possible from the diseases of ageing, you'll have a good quality of life right up until you check out. But then there are other people who think, well, if we can live to 100, why couldn't we live to 120? Or why couldn't we, why yeah. can't isn't we push it, the margin? It's amazing to think that you, you're sitting here now at the age of 64, right? Mm. To think that maybe when you're 110, you might go back to a current affair or something. Do you know? <laughs> <laughs> and, and you've still got another 40 years to go yeah. in the seat at ACA. No, it's definitely not going to happen to me. I, I think yes. I, you don't I, know, Trace. No, I, I'm, I'm absolutely, I'm almost 100% certain it's not going to happen oh. to me. I mean, look at what AI did to me on the ageing sequence. I, oh, yeah. You know, they aged us all to 90. I look 190. Oh, that's not true. It looks like there's, the algorithm's put a one on the end of that. It's terrifying. Uh, oh, this is really, it, it, it is it. exciting. Do you want to live forever? So how many eps are we looking at here, Trace? Four. How many we, okay, four. Four well, one-hour eps every four. Monday night, 7.30. Love the idea. Maybe if you take some of that therapy, you can take it out to six, but we'll see <laughs> We'll see what happens. Um, it's tonight, 7.30 on 9 and 9 now. It's so good to see you again, Tracy. Thanks for coming into the studio. Thanks, Fitzy. Thank you all. Thanks, nice Tracy. to see you. See you later, Absolutely. Tracy. Fitzy and Whipper with Kate Ritchie is a Nova podcast. For more great shows like this, download the Nova Player via the App Store or Google Play. The Nova Player.